Hey guys, welcome back. We are in North Carolina again. Today was quite the unplanned ride. I was gonna do something completely different and uh, helping somebody. And I ended up having six hours to ride here in Asheville. So of course I brought my bike with me and uh, I am going to be doing Pilot Rock today. I got shuttled to the top because I didn't wanna pedal up Laurel Mountain. I did that last time I was here. The ride up Laurel is great, and I will get some footage of it eventually. But today, since I'm limited on time, I have to get back. I didn't want to do that. So I just found out this section of Violet Rock is no bicycles. So I decided to just push up, which is, I don't know, am I doing something I shouldn't? Or is it okay to push up a hiker's trail? I'm not condoning this, I don't think it's okay. I just wasn't aware that the top was not for cyclists. Okay, now we can actually get going. Pilot Rock is a pretty technical descent. It's rocky, it's full of switchbacks, it's uh, very natural. I'm not gonna say unmaintained because that's not the right word. It's just ungroomed, which makes, which makes it quite, quite the challenge. But it's fun. That's Pilot Rock is an absolute Pisgah classic. It's usually done as a loop by climbing Laurel Mountain and descending Pilot. By doing it this way, you avoid the section of trail that is for hikers only. I wasn't aware of this distinction before this ride. Now you are, so try to stay to the area where we're actually allowed to ride. This trail is definitely on the techier side of things. While you will enjoy some speed, it's not particularly flowy, as roots and rocks are the norm and will keep you on your toes. The switchbacks are rocky and exposed, and a few sections are significantly off camber. If you're up for a challenge, this is a trail you'll absolutely love, but I'd steer clear of bringing your buddy who's just starting here. Wow, top is challenging. I've never done this section before. What is wrong with me today? I am like super slow. My suspension was still locked in pedal mode, which may have been part of the issue because the rear end felt like shit. Now it feels okay. I apologize for the little droplets of uh, water on the lens. That's much better. Everything, including the leaves, was extremely wet, so keeping the lens dry was quite a task. God, I love this bike. What you may not have noticed is I'm not very vocal usually, but today I'm riding alone instead of with a group. So that means I've toned down the riding quite a bit. I have to be self-sufficient. Means playing a little bit of a extra safety margin. That was a stupid fall. Hello, Mr. Gimbal. You back? Now you may argue that worrying about crashing may lead you to crashing, and I kind of agree, 
that was a very stupid crash where I've never crashed before. So maybe I just don't have to think about it. Then again, it is pretty wet. So I don't know. Do you think it's good or bad to play extra safety when you're alone? Does it make you crash more? Does it actually make you safer? Oh, this is a great view spot over here. Check it out. Let me get through the actual switchback. There we go. And, uh, oh, I should have done this one as well. This is the view spot. Of course, today, it's not much to see, but usually you get the view of the whole valley there. But since there's nothing to see today, just keep on going. I can't really explain what was going on that day, but I was struggling with the bike all throughout the ride. I had a horrible arm pump, my hands hurt like crazy, I was bouncing off the pedals, and in general not feeling confident on the bike at all. I guess we all have those days where we're just off. I dropped my air pressures a little bit to see if it makes it somewhat better. That does feel better. Big switch back. These confidence issues were making me go slower than usual. And there's something odd about going slower. Every bump becomes more pronounced and the line choice is tougher. And in general, riding gets a lot more complicated than when you just let the bike go. Riding slow is so hard. Because you're holding the bike back from doing what it naturally wants to do. And what it naturally wants to do is usually the right thing to do. Yeah, that was a cool rock garden. Still got it, I still got it. Yeah. Towards the end, the trail flattens out, making it comparatively easier than the top. The key word being comparatively, as it will still have many of the challenges mentioned before. Once you get to the bottom, you'll cross a river and exit over a staircase onto Yellow Gap Road, where you can connect to other trails or head back to civilization if you're done for the day. Huh. There we go. Off camber. I want to stay nice and dry. Well, guys, unfortunately, that's the end of the trail. 
And uh, I was ridiculously slow today. I don't exactly know what happened. My arms were in pain. Couldn't feel what I was doing really. Bouncing all over the place. Hey, I guess not every ride can be a perfect ride. That being said, I still had a blast. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, even though it was a little bit slower. And I will see you for the next one. Happy riding. Oh man, now I have to pedal out of here. <laughs>